and my name's Ray Wilkinson and I live in at 98 Church Path Deal. DeVito's and the whole coffee bar scene, thinking back, I don't know how they made any money at all because we seem to spend all our time there around one cup of tea. But there was money going into the jukebox and there was a state and there, in the early days, and now we're talking now about the late 50s, they were enormously popular. They would be jam-packed. I can remember standing room only of people trying to get into a DeVito's coffee bar um, to play their records of, of um, Johnny the Hurricanes and Cliff and Elvis and all that at something like, again, like the price of heroin, isn't it? About four plays for a shilling or something. Yeah. The corner parlour was very popular with the boatmen in the morning, early in the morning, because it would, it would open round about eight, half past eight. So we'd get ready for the anglers, get the boats down and everything like that. And then it was, you know, especially in the winter, it was a great place just to sort of cluster around a, a mug of steaming coffee or tea or something and wait for everyone to turn up. We've got the Smith brothers who had this wholesale fish yard in Peter Street. And uh, there was Cecil Smith and uh, Sid, and they were brothers. I think Sid was the, as close to being the owner. Uh, Cecil was um, not exactly the sharpest knife in the box, but a really nice bloke. Uh, he, day in, day out, he would just go through the routines of um, crushing up ice. They used, to have, they used to sell ice before ice machines. People used to come from hotels and pubs down to the fish yard and, and go away with uh, sort of half hundred weight blocks of ice. When we went heron in, we'd um, sometimes um, steam up to Kingsdown, out about a quarter of a mile, and start shooting your nets and drive down on the tide and then pull your nets in by the time you, you reach Deal Pier and come ashore. Another starting point would be Deal Pier itself and then drive down to Sandwich Bay. So you'd have maybe half a mile, three quarters of a mile of drift nets just out of uh, these small boats. I mean, we used to work out of a 16 foot open boat with um, uh, it was about three and a, well, a single cylinder engine that could push it along at about three knots at the most. And you'd go all the way down to the bay and then pull your, nut, your, your nets in and then you've got a long chug home. Well, the best wind was a southwest wind. Of course, the southwest wind in autumn would often be a strong southwest wind. And if you are right down in the bay, you've then got to punch home again against a flooding tide and a strong southwest wind. And apparently, Ted May always used to say we had an awful doings getting back. So that was it. He became awful doings. And there's another chap called Pigs in the Garden, somebody or other, because he had pigs in the garden. Bummer Williams. I wouldn't even dare to think why he was called Bummer Williams. Um, Johnny Budd. George Budd, nothing. Um, Claire Hickman, that was his name. Uh, Flip Bailey, Reg Bailey was called Flip Bailey. No, no, no reason why. Well, it, there was a reason, but I don't. No, Freddie Upton, he never had a nickname. Ben's dad was called Doc Bailey, probably the only doctor who didn't wasn't qualified. And it could have been that once he put a plaster around someone's. It didn't take too much to acquire a nickname and then you had it forevermore. But they were, they were, I thought they were smashing blokes because they actually just got on and lived a, a life which I thought was really difficult um, and didn't make a big song and dance about it. And many of them were extremely courageous. They wouldn't have, they wouldn't have called themselves courageous. They'd say, well, that's what we do. But the hardships that they would undergo with no real reward at the end of the day. I mean, most of these chaps never did acquire any reasonable standard of living. They'd be living in these little cottages without basic amenities quite often. <coughs> I mean, Ben's house, that was, he had an outside, outside loo, no bathroom, no central heating. Um, but then that was par, par for the course, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. 